today we're actually going to be making 100% rice sourdough. This one now is going to be very different than some of the previous breads that we've done before. All kind of direction and logic kind of goes out the window with this one. It's something you're going to see it when we bring the dough together. It looks like you're just making a big paste, a mess, that actually produces a really amazing bread. Really packed full of flavour. So rye is a beautiful flour to work with. Now it's not gluten free, it, but it is very, very low in gluten. So you're always gonna find rye breads in particular tend to be quite heavy. Also, they tend to be quite, quite gummy in kind of texture and paste. So as you work in the dough, you're gonna find it, um, if you can adopt your normal kneading technique, it's really not gonna work. So it's a really interesting bread to make and really packed full of flavor. So we're using 500 grams of rye flour. And again, we wanna use about 10 grams of salt. When you're salt and bread, just think of it like a seasoning, the same way as you'd season food. And when you're cooking, you add a little bit of salt to heighten the flavour. Same thing applies to your bread. So everyone's going to have a different uh, preference in terms of flavour. Um, you might be quite sensitive to salt, you want it a little bit lower. So you can always drop the salt levels or increase the margin if you want, depending on your own flavour preference. So the best way to look at salt is it's a seasoning. So you're seasoning your bread. We're using our sourdough starter culture here. So this is a rice starter culture. If you're baking at home, you might have um, a starter culture baked, based on wholemeal flour, or maybe potentially maybe based on this white flour. The only difference is it's the type of flour that we're using. So when I'm feeding and refreshing my starter, I'm simply just using rye flour. Um, I do tend to find it a little bit more active, um, definitely more interesting, more complex flavors. But if you're ever making a sourdough starter before, or if you're looking at the video that we've done before, follow the exact same process and just swap the flour, the wheat flour, for rye flour, that's exact, that's the only difference. With this one, the amount of sourdough starter that we're using is a little bit higher. So we're using about 350 grams. And again, you'll see I'm using the weighing scales. It's important when you're bread making to be that, have that accuracy, uh, particularly when you're not kind of used to working in weights. And again, we're going with about 360 mils of water. So as always, very simply, just bringing all your ingredients together. Now you are gonna feel, when you bring this dough together, you're kind of going, God, I've done something wrong here. This is definitely not right. Because it does not have the feel that your normal bread doughs would have. That's just the rye flour, it's the nature of it. As I say, it might feel like you're uh, creating a real kind of thick, heavy paste. But that's exactly what we're looking for. And you kind of find as you kind of knead it, it's just breaking up, it's just becoming a mess. So all I'm kind of doing, bringing it together, just trying to work that flour in. So with this one, we're not going to be kneading it as much as we would our normal bread flours or our, or our sourdoughs, which we've done previously, because we simply won't be able to get it to window pane effect because we don't have that gluten. And it's the gluten that gives us that elasticity. So keep this using your little dough scraper. Again, do not uh, add extra flour, it doesn't need it. So all I'm doing is kind of, just kind of stretching it out, working it in. It's quite heavy, it's gloopy. That's the way it's meant to be. Previously, I'd always kind of use the heat of my hand and push and stretch and try to hook it back. When we're working with this dough, you kind of find it tends to swallow your hand a little bit. Kind of using your fingertips, just kind of stretch it and fold it back out. Just a couple of minutes to help develop the dough. But that is pretty much it. And I know it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere near coming a bread dough. That's all we need. So again, Drop of sunflower oil or vegetable oil. You can use olive oil if you wish, there's no problem whatsoever. It's simply just stop the dough from sticking to your bowl. Also, we're working with a slightly wet dough. It's having a bit of oil in your hands. It's going to make your life a bit easier. So there's no real shaping here. It's just kind of bringing the dough together. And that's it, just pop it into your bowl. And again, we're going to let that proof for about two and a half hours. So then, after about two and a half hours, exact same way to dough, exact same recipe, you can see it's starting to prove. A few little cracks, little holes are forming. That's our dough, it's kind of ready to go now. I'm simply gonna turn the dough straight out. It's ready to be knocked back. So even when you kind of, when you deflate it, you feel it in all cracks and breaks. So there's not a huge amount of shaping involved. It's just really just trying to give it a rough, round, shape and once again we're using one of our proving baskets which we need to dust quite heavily with flour if you don't have a proving basket you can always improvise for example you could always use your mixing bowl best thing to do then would be to line it with a clean tea towel and then dust the tea towel with flour exactly as how we approve our proving basket the idea of the basket is it simply gives the dough a bit of support 
it acts a bit like scaffolding. It encourages the dough to take on that shape. So instead of proving out, it proves up. Very little shaping involved here. Roughly just bring it around. And that's simply it. With a lot of sourdough breads, we often recommend proving them in the fridge and kind of extending out that proving time. With this bread, however, I generally find it benefits more from being baked on the day. These are kind of a little slightly shorter proof, kind of suffers a little bit when it gets retarded and placed into a fridge. So we're going to let it proof for about two hours and then we're going to bake it. So it's had a good two, two and a half hours of proving. You can see it's filled the basket nicely. Still see those little kind of starting to crack ever so slightly. Kind of a good sign, kind of tell you the dough is ready to go. So with this one, we've got our baking tray, a little dusting of flour. We're simply just going to turn it straight out onto our tray. And what we want to do this time, with a lot of a lot of breads where we used to cut and score it, this one we won't. We're just going to let it sit, give it a few minutes, maybe about five minutes or so sitting before we put it in the oven. And you're going to see all these cracks starting to form. And it's one of the kind of characteristics of a really nice 100% rye sourdough bread. So we let that sit just for a minute. Our sourdough is ready to go into the oven now because you can see it's just been allowed to sit, which has allowed the dough to kind of spread a little bit and crack and break. So our oven again is set to 230 degrees. And in our oven, I've got a little roasting tray. It's basically just been put in as I turn the oven on. It's getting really nice and hot. So with a boiling kettle, I can just pour in. Which is going to help release steam into the oven. Which will protect our dough as it bakes. So your baking time on this will be a little bit longer. We're looking about a good 45 to 50 minutes. So initially when you bring out your dough, because of the nature of the rye flour, sometimes it can feel a little bit gummy um, or it's a tiny bit doughy. So the dough actually benefits from sitting for almost a day. It's called ripening. So the dough is allowed to ripen and allows the flavor to develop much, much more. So it's particularly, it's a great one if you make it lasting in the evening. It can sit overnight and you're gonna find a much better flavor come the following morning. So we'll let that bake now. We'll come back to it. So you're not going to get the big jump in the oven like we had, say, a lot of our previous breads. So with this one, go up a little bit, but that's kind of the slight it sits at. Because it's so low in gluten, it will be a closer texture to bread, but that's what we're trying to achieve with our 100% rye. We've got our beautiful 100% rye sourdough. It's been baking for the last 50 minutes. It's got that lovely dark colour. You can really smell uh, the beautiful aromas coming from it and that beautiful cracked finish. But we'll let that cool. As I say, if you can let that sit for a day, even before you cut into it, it's gonna have really packed full of flavor. 